Well, hello everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today I want to cover, well, number one, you saw the title, right? I want to cover how to color grade some footage, but particularly a log footage. So I'm, I've got some C log footage here. It's off of a Canon, uh, one of the cinema series cameras. And I realized I've never talked about how to grade log footage. Now I want to add a twist to it. I don't want to use a cut, a, a, a LUT, a lookup table. So what that's going to do is it's really going to turn this into a tutorial about color grading kind of for anybody. Anybody can check this out and learn a little bit about coloring in Premiere Pro. I think you're really going to enjoy it and you're going to see exactly what in the world we're going to do here. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, please make sure you hit the little like button and subscribe to the channel as well so you never miss another video or video editing tutorial in the future. And if you're so inclined to support what we're doing here at TutFit, I'm still working on a full Premiere Pro course, but for now I have a Photoshop course. The link just appeared right up there in the top corner. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. Maybe it's not your thing. Totally understand it if it's not, uh, but it's a good way to support us if you pick up a copy of that course. And if you do, thank you so much. For now, let's jump into this tutorial and check it out. So I have some footage here shot in a C-Log on a C100, and uh, this is it. I mean, it's, it's actually a little underexposed as well. And by the way, uh, for when I'm exposing uh, when I'm exposing my images, I stumbled across this article a little bit ago by Shane Hurlbutt, who's a super talented cinematographer, director of photography, the whole bit, um, worked on some really, really top-notch type projects. Um, he has a really interesting article about how to expose specifically for the Canon EOS Cinema series, uh, and it's really, really helpful. Uh, it's a lot of good stuff in terms of here's what you shoot for in a uh, log, and then here's what it's going to look like when you go ahead and grade it. And there are some, uh, there are some really great color lookup tables, LUTs, specifically for uh, Canon's Cinema Series cameras. And if you shoot and kind of underexpose for the skin a little bit, obviously you always have to, you kind of expose for your highlights, but when you don't have to worry about the highlights, exposing for the skin obviously is the way to go. Um, so, you know, there's just, there's just a lot that goes into, well, not a lot that goes into it, but some interesting things to think about while you're exposing your camera. So here I have a, a shot that is kind of deliberately underexposed, just kind of a, a sort of a cut from an interview that I was working on. And we're going to take and we're going to brighten this up. We're going to color grade it a little bit and correct it. You can see her daughter walked in on us. Um, but uh, we're going to color grade and correct this clip using under the effects panel here, video effects. And I'm interested in color correction. And we have Lumetri Color. So I'm just going to drag and drop it on the video clip. And then I'm going to enter into right up here the color workspace. See, I've got all these different workspaces up here. I'm going to enter into the color workspace. You can always go window workspaces color as well but I can just choose it right there, color workspace. And what's gonna happen is I not only get my Lumetri color scopes over here, right? You can right click by the way and get your HSL or you know whatever scope you're looking for. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the HSL. I'm just interested in the basic scope for now. And before we even touch any of the color or brightness options over here in the basic correction or the curves or color wheels, whatever, I like to take a look at my scope and typically I like to expose skin on my, my C100 somewhere between like, I don't know, 35 and 45 on the IRE scale over here. That's just, it's just zero to 100. My camera has this on, on it as well. So I can monitor kind of where the skin tones are falling depending on the situation. I usually don't like to let it get above 60, 65, um, especially if I'm shooting in log and I know that I'm going to be color grading. Now, as I move the playhead around, I can see the stuff that's moving the most, well, not when her daughter comes in, but I can see the stuff that's moving the most is kind of right in here. So I have an idea that probably her skin tones for the most part are here and probably some of the bright highlights of her skin tone are coming up into here. That's that movement we're seeing up there, all right? So the bulk of her skin tones are here. So it is underexposed. It's at about 25 on the IRE scale. Um, so 25 to like 35 is where the bulk of this is. So I know this needs to be pushed up. And by the way, down here at the bottom, these are the darkest pixels in my image, zero down here being total black. So I'm not clipping any blacks and up at 100 or 255, that's total white. I'm not clipping any highlights. So that's good to know. So with that information in mind, I know I need to brighten things up right off the bat. So I think I'm going to jump into curves. I'm going to go here to curves. I'm going to use the white dot first, which is kind of the RGB composite channel. And I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull this dot out to right about there. 
that looks pretty good. So we're brightening everything up. You can just watch that scope get brighter and brighter and brighter. And the scope, I keep one eye on the scope. I keep one eye on the video. Sometimes I see people, you know, coloring and grading just based on the scopes. And either I'm just not skilled enough to do that or I don't know. A lot of times it comes out looking really bad. So I, I kind of try to be careful with that. I'm going to add another point here to just infuse some contrast back in the mid-tones. So I'm going to drop a point right around there. So you can see here before curves, after curves, we're beginning the brightening process uh, for our uh, image here. Next, I'm going to go over here to basic corrections. You can see I could import a LUT and there are built-in LUTs. I don't know why Premiere doesn't have some for Canon's cinema line. It'd be nice if they would. And also probably for like Sony's uh, S-Log. It'd be cool to have that. But we have you know, Ari and Alexa and some of the, the huge cameras, the Phantom. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to mess with LUTs. I'm not going to worry about going and finding a LUT. We're going to kind of do this manually. So what I want to do here is I'm going to boost the exposure 1.0. So that's quite a bit on the exposure scale. You can see we're bringing up the, the brightest of the blue channel there. It's almost ready to start clipping, but not quite. And it's probably detail back here in this window because it was full on daylight coming through this window back here. So you can see, I mean, look at that. The blue is super close to the top. We're very close to clipping. Let's come over here to contrast. We will increase the contrast to like 11, drop some contrast in there. Um, I think I'll try boosting the highlights to like 20, but again, I'm just keeping an eye up here on the blues. We're starting to kind of maybe lose a little bit there. Maybe I'll drop that to like 12. Uh, here in the shadows, I do want to boost the shadows as well. I'll try boosting the shadows like 12, something like that looks pretty good. And then in terms of the whites, I'll, yeah, I'll stick the, I'll keep the whites at zero and I'm going to reduce the blacks. So this is going to really introduce some good contrast for us. I'm going to knock the blacks down to like, I don't know, let's try negative 30, right? We basically got there on the slider. Negative 30 looks pretty good. And then I'll adjust the color temperature a little bit. So I'll warm it up a touch. Let me take it to like, I don't know, 12, a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, there's a bit of magenta in her skin, uh, but we can always target that using curves down here with the hue saturation curve. Let's try, though, just reducing and introducing green. So reducing magenta, introducing green, maybe a little bit too much green. I don't know. Let's go like negative 10, something like that. So if we shut off basic correction, there's before, there's after. And you can see here in our scopes, we're really lifting things up. Let's check to see here. Now where we see her face moving is all in here, but on the higher end, we're closer to that 45 to 55 range. Probably still needs to be a little bit brighter, but I like the way the actual video looks. It looks a lot better in my opinion. Let's go curves here and let's uh, let's begin tweaking some of the curves. So I'm going to tell Premiere, target the reds for me and I'm going to boost the saturation of the reds a little bit. And you know, I'll tell target the yellows as well. I'm going to pull that bit of the yellow down. Uh, I'm going to pull some greens in as well. Let's, let's introduce some greens. It's just going to add more and more dots along this. I'm going to, oops, I got rid of all those points. I'm going to undo that and bring those points back. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to drag a little bit more of the green into here. You can see that's really attacking like the back wall of the gym back there. That's what all these areas are doing. See that green that's coming in back there. So we're going to make sure we, we we're loose on the green. Darn it. I got rid of that again. There's something wrong with my mouse guys. I've been having trouble recording all day. Here we go. <laughs> no, don't worry. I just have to go buy a new one. All right, now we'll bring the blues over. Maybe increase the blues a little bit, but there's still like a magenta. I don't know if you can see it, a magenta color cast in her skin. So I'm going to tell uh, Premiere here, look, add some more stuff up here to the magentas, and we're going to just kind of fade the magentas out a little bit. There we go. That looks so much better. All right, so before curves and, and the hue saturation curve and after. So we're really just playing. And the way this works is, I mean, just the way it looks, if you pull outward, it increases the colors in that little spectrum that is between wherever you place two dots. And you can use the pen tool and custom place dots as well. Or you can, you know, click on any dot. Uh, or I'm sorry, double click on any, well, you double click on any dot, it gets rid of all of them. What you want to do is command or control click on a dot, and that's going to allow you to get rid of any. I thought the double click was the the, the trick. That, that must work up here in curves. Um, anyway, command or control click on the dot, and it's going to get rid of those dots for you. Uh, and yeah, you can see. So without even going into creative too, we could still come in here and apply one of these looks if we wanted. Um, now the looks are going to be a little deceiving because this is the look before all of our correction has been applied. So if I just add this look, you can see it's adding it to what we've already done done. Uh, and you know, eh, I don't know. I just don't know that I really like it. So I'm just going to undo that. Uh, but you can see basic correction and curves without a real legitimate lookup table. We're able to take this footage and really brighten it up, lighten it up and make it look how we want it to look. And of course you can focus on your lumetry scopes. And if you 
really, really want to and you really feel like it needs to be increased, you can come over and boost it. But you can see if I really get the skin tones up into the, you know, 55, the 75 range, everything just looks way too bright. So that's why I think it kind of looks good where it is. Again, I'm not worshiping my Lumetri scopes. I'm instead watching, you know, like a 70 to 30. I keep 30% of my eyes over here on Lumetri scopes and about 70% here on what the clip uh, for real deal looks like here on my monitor. So uh, if we want to check out the before and after, again, we can go to our effect controls, make sure we have that video clip selected, and we can shut off our entire Lumetri color effect by hitting this little FX icon. There's before, there's after. So yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the little like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and for color grading in Premiere Pro without a lookup table, just doing it by hand, specifically on log footage, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, touchvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.